In our pre-show meeting, I tried to get everyone on our staff to come do the Remember the Titans dance as the entrance into the show today. Everyone said no, so instead we're going to drink champagne during the show, and I promise you by the end we will all be doing it right here on the Up and Adam Show. Your Friday, the World Cup is starting. Excited about that. We're excited for the weekend. We had a game yesterday, and I know Titans fans are excited because now everyone's going to be giving you your love as you pulled off the 27 to 17 win in Lambeau. Beautiful game to just watch those snowflakes coming down. It was a thing of beauty. Uh, and the Titans now, hello, Derek Henri, seven and three. Oh, Henri, that's a soccer player. Look, I really brought it all together. Uh, I'll get to the Packers side in a little bit because we always do here on this program. But first, yes, we're going to give some much deserved love. Earlier this week, who talked about how the Titans continue to win despite having the 32nd ranked offense in the league? Marissa's pointing at me! Uh, they're incredible in, in finding ways to make it happen without players on the field, without the Harold Landry, without some of their best, to, to create things where things are a miss. Uh, and it was really awesome to watch this happen yesterday because you saw uh, last night, this wasn't really the case. So something shifted is outside of one throw. Tannehill was not inept offensively. He was as brilliant as we've ever seen him. 22 of 27, 333 yards, two touchdowns. This passing game, hallelujah, came alive for the first time all season. And I do think a lot of it has to do with this emergen, emergence of uh, Traylon Burks that continues, right? A first rounder. This was a tone-setting performance. I love seeing young wide receivers do their thing. Monster. Did you just see that? That is a monster conversion on first third down situation of the game and he went on to rack up seven catches for 111 yards on the day uh i gotta say he looked pretty much unstoppable last night even when jair alexander was all over him and i'm always texting hamilton about jair alexander when the packers are playing i'm always like why isn't he on cd lamb the whole time why aren't they moving i love jair i give him lots of credit so for Traylon burks to do what he did it was so impressive to me um and the defense we know is impressive we know what they can do the, if the offense can play like this if they can, and I hope that they can, then this is a Titans team that can be legitimately uh, in the chase for an AFC title that they've been so close to. They've tasted it on their lips, and they want to make it happen. Uh, so congrats, Titans fans. I love it for you. Uh, we have to talk Packers? I guess we have to. Uh, okay, let's check in with Aaron Rodgers, guys. Here's what he uh, did and what say he said he was thinking uh, as the final seconds were ticking down off the clock in this one. Just about what could have been. You know, the momentum that could have been with a win tonight. Frustration around a couple throws. Frustration around the, the opportunity that was in front of us to go to five and six, to have great momentum going into this mini buy. Um, that was probably it. And then they asked, where do you go from here, Aaron Rodgers? And he said, home. <laughs> Which I kind of loved and laughed and, and snickered at a little bit. Uh, but we're all thinking the same thing, Aaron. We're all thinking about what could have been. What could have been last night? What could have been this season, last season? And I'm starting to worry that's going to be the prevailing thought when we look back at Aaron Rodgers' career. And it makes me really sad. Four and seven, this team probably cooked for the year. And I wonder how much longer this is going to keep going on. Rogers is turning 40, uh, or he'll be 40 during the 2023 season. How many more chances is he going to have to capture that second ring? It was really special that Tom Brady was able to do it. Will Aaron Rodgers have those opportunities? Will they be there for him in Green Bay? I want to see it for him. But to me, with the way, and I'm not taking blame off of, all the blame off of Aaron, but with the way the organization has handled things and the roadblocks that he's thrown up as well, I just don't have a whole lot of confidence that it's going to happen. And you hate to see legends this happen to them um, in the twilight of their career. Uh, I do want to talk about some news, though, and some teams that are still in the race this morning. So here's, here's what's going on. We have three matchups this weekend, guys, with especially big implications down the stretch. So let's start in New England. We're going to shift gears here from Thursday Night Football. Week 11 is here and upon us. In New England, the Jets are taking on the Patriots. Bill Belichick has been wearing cut-off sweatpants in the snow, of course, to get – who does this for him? To get himself ready. Uh, which we love. So both of these teams that you're looking at here, 
year. They're in playoff spots right now, but we know how quickly things can change. And I feel like this is one of those games where we're going to come back at the end of the year and say, well, this is why the Jets and Patriots did, or will, this is why the Jets and Patriots did not make it to the postseason. Now, it's an especially huge game for Zach Wilson because he, you know, we on our set are, uh, I almost said such a bad phrase on television. Oh, my God. Uh, in our um, makeshift vibrant studio in New York welcomed New York sports radio icon Craig Carton a fan duel fame here to the show uh you know that's after they lost to the Patriots a couple of weeks ago and he'd completely given up hope and he's a heartbeat of that New York fan base so uh Jets fans are happy the team is winning but I know that I know for a fact that Jets fans are not fully bought in on Zach as their present and their future yet so the last game against New England that's a big reason why him up against Belichick oof he struggled throughout the day. We saw the three interceptions in that one. You know, he was able to bounce back and have a solid game in the win over Buffalo. But that game against the Pats, I do think it's gnawing at fans. He was asked about it again yesterday and, uh, and how he was felt about the emotions that he had that day. Take a listen to this. I thought they were good emotions. I mean, I was frustrated. And, you know, I still believe nobody outside of this building knows what they're talking about. So. Well, Zachary, you got the chance to prove it here on Sunday. This is a golden opportunity to shut everybody up. Now, if you go up to New England and you take care of business against the Pats, you get your Jets team, your squad to 7-3. and three. No one's going to be thinking about that first game. Nobody's going to even t talk about those three interceptions. So you'll be giving your squad a major inside track. Uh, at a playoff spot and inching, by the way, one step to having the Jets fans embrace you as the future of this team. And that is so important in a team and in a city that can make it hell for you otherwise. So go make it happen, Zach Wilson. Uh, okay, let's move on here. The Cowboys at Vikings, they, these boys, they have a big opportunity here to prove something. They head into Minnesota. The Vikings, of course, rolling at 8-1. and one. The Cowboys blowing a major opportunity at Lambeau, and they fall to 6-3. and three. So things have been looking really great for the Cowboys. They were up 28-14 to 14 in the fourth quarter at Lambeau, about to get to 7-2, seven, seven and two, and then the wheels came off. Bang. There was frustration all around. Oh man, especially for, <laughs> from from Mike McCarthy. I don't know why. I don't. It shouldn't be funny. It just kind of is to me. Uh, there are some positives for Dallas, though. It's Friday. We're a positive show, so we're gonna hit you up with this. I think Tony Pollard is a positive. I think he's emerging as a genuine star. Over the last two starts with Zeke sidelined, he's averaged over 137 yards per game. He has scored four touchdowns and you know we've been waiting to see here's another thing if CeeDee Lamb is that number one receiver if he can be that guy without Amari Cooper yeah he is that guy he's averaged over 113 yards per game with three touchdowns over the last two weeks so sure yeah all right here we're looking at uh, bam it's all been really pretty and yeah Dak has had some bad turnovers at Lambeau but I think overall we're seeing this offense find itself and click in a major way. So I know we're throwing headsets, and I don't know how this game's going to turn out, uh, but if they can keep what they're doing right now going, I do think they can inject some serious juice into their season and make people start talking about them a lot more. Uh, Cowboys, uh, I don't know if the Cowboys fans feel this way, but definitely the media at large. doesn't. I, you never want to give the Cowboys too much love. That's what I think the feeling is, because you think they're eventually going to hurt you. And I think the feeling was like that with Kirk Cousins and the Vikings, but they've sort of proven themselves themselves. And, uh, and I think Kevin O'Connell helps that. I don't think McCarthy always helps the case for the Cowboys in gaining trust from people wanting to talk about them in a positive light. A win over the Vikings, though, now you got something. Ah, okay. Then, I'm just getting lipstick all over this thing. Uh, what's another really good game? What's a, That's a great shirt. Oh my gosh, great shirt. Why do you always come out here and take pictures of, pictures of the set? What is that for? <laughs> Could someone explain that to me? Marissa, do you know? Is it like for like lighting? What? What? <laughs> He's so embarrassed. You can't. Marissa! Marissa! Everybody! Go back to Marissa, ladies and gentlemen! Hey, there she is. All right, okay. That's just so much happens in this studio. <laughs> um, then, I want to talk about the Sunday night game. Yeah. Let's get me back on track here. The current top seed. <laughs> <laughs> the top seed in the A's. Here, I'll smile for you. Take it. Take the picture. 
Okay. Uh, to the top seed in the AFC, he just said, oh my God. Uh, it's the Chiefs, look at this. Chiefs Chargers, what a game. Oh my gosh, heading to LA. Uh, it's at SoFi Stadium. And this is going to be a massive moment for Mahomes. Mahomes wants to capture a second MVP. We know that. Take a look at some of this. He has had an absolutely brilliant year so far, leading the league in touchdowns and yards, posting a career high in yards per game. And he's, of course, doing it without Tyreek Hill. Man, I know I'm saying Tua should be in the conversation, but holy moly. It's all about Mahomes. Sunday night, he has to do it without McCole Hardman. Likely without Juju. Possibly even without Marquez Valdez Scantling. So if he's able to keep it rolling, really think about that. Sunday night, all the lights, all the air, all the people watching. If he can do this being down three of his top targets, it could end up being, I think, the like the cherry on top of what his MVP case is. It'll be hard to not give it to Mahomes. Uh, and he's going to have to be on top of his game, right? Chargers, they've shown they are feisty. They're not going anywhere. And with all their injuries, there's going to be another battle with the Chargers fighting for playoff lives. That's what it's at stake for them. Uh, and then the Chiefs needing and trying to maintain full control of the increasingly important, by the way, number one seed in the AFC. Guys, we have a great show. Want to know why? Let me just show you guys something. Let me just show you guys something. Can we zoom in at all on this thing? No? We don't have like a, I forget. The, like literally the password to my telephone, if I want to get into my telephone, is 434343. Four, three, four, three. Conrad has a really bad haircut because he didn't know that. But why is it like that? Because my favorite player, Darren Sproles, is just the most electric. He's a stud. He's here! Darren Sproles on the show! After this, I am so excited about this, I can't believe it. Boy, oh boy, is he special. The tank yeah. Run it up, run it up, run it up. Darren Sproles, gone! On my path, getting it. Uh, You've got to be joking me! Run it up, yeah. run it up, yeah. hitting the gas, ripping it. Miss him out on the field. We're happy to have him on the show. Our guest today played 15 years in the NFL. Chargers, Saints, and Eagles currently ranking sixth. Sixth! Sixth all-time with 19,696 all-purpose yards. Not only one of the best running backs, but one of the greatest return specialists ever to play in the NFL. A superstar and a Super Bowl champion, Darren Sproves. Hey, how you doing? I'm so good. I'm so happy to have you. Of course, you know I'm obsessed with you. I'm surprised you don't have a restraining order against me because you're like my <laughs> favorite player. I saw you once on the field with Miles Sanders in Philly, and I was like, <laughs> uh, and you were so cool, and, and it's, it's really good to have you on the show. I want to know how retirement's going. How's it been treating you? What have you been doing? Retirement has been great. Um, so me and my wife uh, started a track team. So, so my track team has kind of been um, kind of been keeping me busy, like with the girls. So it's been uh, fun. Wait, so you have, but you're, is, is the team with, you have three girls, right? And they all run track. Uh, I, so I got three girls, yes. They all run track. Uh, my oldest is 21. She's at Fresno State. Um, I have a 13-year-old and a 10-year-old, all girls. And so they're all playing. I know. I was looking at it on Instagram, uh, and they competed in the, or two of them maybe, competed in the AAU Junior Olympics, right? Yeah, they did, yep. And how proud are you? The, hey, this is what I tell people. Like, So when I was playing, when I was playing, whatever, I never got nervous like this. Like, you know what I'm saying? But, but like, right before um, they get ready to run, yeah. my nerves are to the roof. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy to me. <laughs> what is it? Does your wife calm you down? She get nervous, too. <laughs> so we both in the stands is nervous. I think that's amazing. And you guys should be so proud. It's incredible. Congratulations to them. You're excited to uh, follow their careers. On, uh, you, I mean, you have a great Instagram. You're giving takes and predictions and letting us in on your life a little bit. So that's all really exciting uh, with retirement. We do miss you on the field. But I will say, back in the summer, you were in the headlines, again, for what you did when you were a little kid. Speaking of your daughters, let's go back to when you were a child. I mean, are you sick of seeing these Pop Warner highlights? Because they came back up. Were you surprised by this going off again? Yeah, I was, but <laughs> hey, but my pop wanted, why did they give me that terrible face mask? That that face mask was terrible. <laughs> uh, but but no, but my kids, my uh, my kids, uh, uh, they really love watching it though. So it's it's cool. 
Do you have a favorite memory of like when you were a, a little kid playing? Was what was the moment, Darren, that you said, "Oh, I'm better than everybody out here"? Um, you know, as a kid, like you don't really be like thinking like that. Like you just be out there having fun. But mm. um, uh, like I had a moment um, <laughs> when I scored my first touchdown. Uh, do you remember like Bo Jackson, like? Uh, it was like right after he scored. Yeah. Uh, he just shoot like at the at the players. Yeah. So I did that. Um, uh, like my first time like scoring. My dad was so mad at me. Uh, uh, that's the last time I really like did something in the end zone like crazy. Ever? Like even in the NFL, you didn't. Yeah. Never. Nope. That must have been some uh, some conversation with your dad then, huh? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that stuck with you. That's amazing. Uh, your career was in incredible. Like, watching footage is, uh, for some players, you know, you prepare for an interview where you're looking at game, It's and it's fine. Yours just jumps off the page. It always has, even when you were a little, uh, a little kid. But I'm going to put you on the spotlight with a little trivia quiz. There are four players, Darren. Four players other than you to have 19,696 yards and 64 total touchdowns. Can you name them? Four? There's four, yeah. What um, position? All different positions. All, all different? Uh, uh, three, three running backs, one wide receiver. So, Jerry Rice. Got it. Uh, Emmitt Smith. Got it. Um... Brian Mitchell? Mm -mm. No, but we'll get um, to Brian Mitchell. Go ahead. Um, Frank Gore? Frank Gore, yeah. And one more. I'm from Chicago now. Walter. The Walter. great Walter. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. really? The, can, it's, you put that into context. That's the, isn't that the craziest thing? It, it really is. It really is. Uh, you, you were Never always, would I have thought. Yeah. Never would I have thought that I'd be up there with all the greats like that. Well, you certainly are, and you're you're exciting. You're the, one of the most electrifying players to watch, and it's it's hard to pick one play that sort of puts, you know, I I could say like, oh, let me sit down and pick my favorite moment for Darren's, but like, not to pick one that puts your greatness in perspective is not easy. But if forced to do so, I thought about this one, and I want you to take me through it. I'm sure you remember it well. 2009 against the Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> what are you seeing here? Yeah, I see. Um, I was with the Chargers. Uh, so it was an eight. We uh, uh, we called the bullet route. Okay. But um, but uh, it was actually a blown coverage. And then uh, Terrell Suggs, he was supposed to jam me <laughs> when I released, but he actually missed me, and it was wide open. Okay, but I want to see that again because you're saying uh, that. It that's Ed Reed out there. You make yeah. you make Ed Reed. Maybe I mean, first of all, here's how I see it: your speed out the backfield is insane, and then you make Ed Reed. Ed Reed, maybe the greatest safety ever, look absolutely ridiculous out there trying to tackle you. Ed Reed, no one ever makes him look like that. Hey, that was that, but that was that. Uh, look at your. Face. That was that. Uh, Young Darren Sproles right there. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is one of my favorite plays ever. Just just because it is Ed Reed. You made him look silly. And there's not many clips that you can you can point to that show that. And man, you really played you played with some interesting quarterback. Is that a dog? What are we listening to? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Okay. You were you were obviously one of the most more unique running backs in NFL history. So when you watch the NFL now. Uh, are there any backs that remind you of yourself? Any backs? Um, it's really two. It's uh, Boston Scott and okay. it's, and it's Tariq Coleman. Like, but he's been hurt. But he he's probably like the closest. I feel like. What is it about Boston Scott? Because you spent some time with him, right? Or is that yeah? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So like. With Boston, uh, uh, we're the same height, uh, we're the same compact. You know what I'm saying? We uh, we both compact, uh, quick, fast. He's a, uh, um, uh, 
we just got the same mindset too. Cause we talk a lot about plays and stuff like that, but um, uh, we think the same. What does that mean? Like, so when he's, what is he, is he, is he, was he trying to get into your head when you were in the locker room with him? Like, I don't think Boston Scott is an answer a lot of people out there thought you were going to give. Yeah. Um, so like with Boston, he, um, like we running routes, yeah. like, they say ace choice. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, we got the same, like, the thought process. We're trying to cross face. We're trying to cross the uh, linebacker's face because the big play is in the middle. Okay. In the middle of the field. And then, like, um, we trying to work the player so we can get, um, uh, like, to the middle of the field. But, like, um, but like uh, he has that same, like, thought process. Huh. I like that. I'm surprised, personally, I'm surprised you didn't say Eckler. Because just from, yeah. from size, the hands, and versatility. No Eckler? <clears throat> um, like with Eckler, uh, he's bigger than I was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he actually does, like, he don't lead a field. So it's a little bit different. Wait, were you happy to leave the field? No, but you know what I'm saying? Like, but you just got to just, you got to, you got to like, hey. like your role, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you just got to know, you got to know your role. But I know it was like some games, whatever, like if you had like injury, um, like to another running back, then I stay on the field. But I wasn't on the field as much as he is. Yeah, he's on the field all the time. If he's healthy, he's on the field. That's interesting. Right. I didn't think of it that way. All right, interesting. Um, I thought he was around the same side, but you, I mean, yeah, I guess he's not. I've never met Austin Eckler in person, but yeah, I guess he. I guess I don't know why I thought that that would be the comparison that you'd go. Boston Scott's a great one though. He's he a little bit bigger than me too, though. How he's much bigger? bigger? How many? Re let's get research. I want to. I, I, I yeah. didn't understand that, but it's so true. He is on. He is on. You know, you guys had that. You know, you did you did different things and you did returns and all that. So it is different. That makes sense. That's fair. That's fair. Good explanation. Uh, so we had um, another great running back on the show, Darren, earlier this week. We had LaShawn McCoy, and he was all up in the headlines on every like he was talking crazy on the show, <laughs> saying that he doesn't think Bill Belichick is a great coach. Uh, so you know, do you have a controversial NFL opinion that you'd like to that you'd like to get out here? Would you like to say something crazy? Uh, see, I think um, uh, he's a great coach to me. He's a great coach, but he's an even better coach when he had Tom Brady. That's what I'm going to say. Right. So it kind of worked. Without with Tom Brady, without Tom Brady, though, they're not the same. Well, like, he's not the same coach because he can't do what he what he did with Tom. Got it. Well, that wasn't a very, come on, you could do better than, I need a hot take out of Darren's, I need like a, nah. are you willing to say like a, you know, you could come out and say like Carson Wentz is better than Tom Brady, that would fly. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh, I want to, I, I do, I do want to, I know you're laughing and it is funny. I do want to, okay. I hear a lot about you, of course, just because I'm, I'm such a huge fan. Uh, it, it, about Wentz, let's just get into this really quick because I, you know, I get news alerts for all things Darren Sproles, and I know when you're, you know, I know when you're getting honored at Kansas State. I know, you know, I hear if you're seen somewhere in LA, and I also heard that during the 2017 Super Bowl run, and I heard this recently, that Carson was upset that the team was having success without him, and you. You, Darren Sproles, leader, veteran, one of the best players at his position ever, you were the guy that had to check him about it, that you two got into it even a little bit. Did that actually happen? We had some words, but it wasn't, like, it wasn't as big as, like, what everybody is saying. But it's like, uh, I had to make him, like, kind of, like, realize that, that, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, you got to be happy for the team. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, we're all mad uh, um, that we're not playing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, we always hurt, but but it's still that you still got to be happy for the team. D did things change after that interaction? Yeah, we, yeah, we, um, uh, we fine. Yeah. 
no, we but find I mean, to this day. But I mean, did he change? Like, you know, what was Wentz like then after you have that conversation? What was he like? Was he, what was Wentz really like? Because I hear a bunch of different things. What was he really like during Foles' run to the Super Bowl? Um, he was walking around quiet, but but then, like, um, right after that kind of, like, conversation, that all kind of changed. How? Huh? How? He wasn't the way he was before. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just think it's good to kind of get this stuff out. We, I just hear too many different things, right? And I love that it was you, this leader, and I can't imagine you do that all of the time. Like, it had to take something happening for you to spring into action and get that done. But then y'all won the Super Bowl, and, and it was all good. And, and it's just obviously interesting because Carson's, you can't tell me Tar Carson doesn't have talent. I know he has talent. He's highly touted coming into the league. But things haven't worked out with so many different teams now, and I want to know why. Uh, um, like, for me, like, personally, I, I just feel like um, I, it's like with Carson, mm -hmm. he's a great player. He's a great player. Uh, I, I just feel like he just needs to take coaching like better. Mm. That's, I feel like that's probably like his hardest thing to do. Mm. But like, um, uh, like I know, like with Carson, um, he has to have like an outlet too. Like he needs to have like a good tight end. Like if you don't have a good tight end to like. It's like his comfort zone. So like, um, uh, that's what he really needs, like to be like successful, like an offense. Yeah, but then I bet like, you know, but then if you're, if I'm on a team and he's, you know, that's that's another thing I hear, you just go to Zach Ertz, you the whole time, like what's up, you know, you gotta get everybody, <laughs> you're smiling. You just gotta get everybody else involved. So I get, like I kind of get that, but that's part of being on a team. And you were on the Saints for so long and the Saints are, um, very near and dear to my heart. We have some, I don't know if you know this, Mark Ingram comes on the show every week. And, you know, they're losing, and he's her, and he comes on, and he's so positive, and he's great. And we have this game that uh, we, we give people red cards when they cross the line because he owns a, a soccer team uh, in Washington, which is amazing. So, uh, you know, if it's a penalty, if it's a, you know, a press conference quote that went too far, even, a, a, you know, a, a bad outfit, he sort of gives us an opinion. And you were with him. You were in the New Orleans locker room when Mark Ingram broke into the league in 2011. So uh, what do you make of Mark Ingram and, and what would you give him a red card for? <laughs> that's my dog. I yeah. can't, that's, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we, you know what? We had came to New Orleans the same year. Like, that's been, uh, that's family to me. Um, uh, then like with a red card, I don't know. To tell you the truth, I don't know. Do you guys still talk? All the time. What is that? What do you guys talk time. about? He's like the most positive player you could ever imagine. Everything. We talk about everything. And, and I feel like, um, like when I left the Chargers and I got to New Orleans, yeah. like he kept me young. You know what I'm saying? Like with all the playing and laughing, joking, like that's my guy. That's amazing. Where should Sean Payton coach next year? Ooh, we. He can't go to Carolina. That that just don't sit right. That's no. what Mark said. Oh, did he say that? Yeah, Mark said you can't. Sean Payton was here in studio with me, and we had Ingram on, and Ingram said, "If that's not going to happen, you can't do that." So no, Carolina is out. Yeah. Dallas. If, ooh we. Dallas all day. Dallas over. Uh, I'm just. I don't know. You know. Arizona, there's LA Chargers potentially. I'm not saying these are going to be, you know, open seats, but potentially. Uh, uh, Dallas. Dallas. Da yeah. All right. I say I, Dallas. Okay, I could see him there. I could definitely see him there. Listen, every time Mark Ingram comes on the show every week, I think, man, how much longer are we going to see him on Sundays? Like, how, when is he? You know, he has a family, like he's got other things he wants to do. He could be he could be on the microphone any day of the week that he wants to. Um, and so, you, you know, you you played in the league so long. What is one thing that you wish you knew 
about what retirement and walking away from football was going to actually be like when you were still playing? Um, what I actually knew, you saying? Like, what do you wish you knew? Like, is it exactly what you, what is it? Does it feel like what you thought it was going to feel like? Um, like when I first, when I first retired, you, um, you have that time clock, like, uh, like for camp, like your body just like, um, your body just knows, uh, uh that you need to be somewhere. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, um, but with something I had, like, you really got to know, like, where you fit in, um, hmm. um, uh, like with the wife and kids, like, you know what I'm saying? Like they have their own like little schedule that they did. Um, um, uh, like when you play, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When they get up in the morning, you got to find your little way uh, without like messing up their little, um, <laughs> schedule, you know what I'm saying? But that's, that's pretty much the only thing. So how did you work your way in? You driving the kids around to track practice? Uh, track practice, school, like stuff like that. Just, just, uh, um, and then, and then, like, right after like a couple months, you kind of, you kind of get like where you fit in at. And I love that you have to fit it because they, because they, they, they're doing the same thing they've always done. It's you that's different. <laughs> right. That's interesting. I think that's good advice for guys who are approaching uh, retirement and making that transition. Mm -hmm. uh, you finished your career in Philadelphia. They're killing it. Do you watch and do you think like, I wish I, wish I was out there? Because uh, th they're they amazing and they look so fun right now. They do. Um, uh, when I'm watching the games on Sunday, sometimes I'll be like, man, I, uh, man. Ah. If they call me, if they call me right now uh, to go get some punch or something like that. I think I can still do it. What do you got? What do you got left? Tell me, Darren, really. Huh? What do you got left? What I got left? Uh-huh. Maybe the playoffs. I can give you a great, I probably can give you, I can give you a great playoff run. Just like how Weddle did. No, how Weddle came yeah. back and did that. I can give you a great playoff run. And then get another Super Bowl ring. Because that's what I mean. Weddle did. Weddle did that. Weddle came right. and right, scooped in right at the right time. Right. Uh, do you think they have what it takes? Because it would take a lot for you to go back. Obviously, on your body, your yeah. mentals, nah. you're worked into the routine. But like, do you think they got it? They lost Monday night. No, you're not worried at all. No, nah, I'm not. No, nah. um, I'm not uh, worried about it at all. They um, they had turnovers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't. You can't win a game like that with with three critical turnovers. But um but uh once they clean that up and they clean up the um they run defense, they're gonna be fine. Yeah, and and, and if you came back I, I bet you Jalen Hurts would get you the ball. <laughs> <laughs> that backfield is kinda hey, that backfield is kinda loaded. I just wanna catch points. <laughs> Let me test points and kickoffs, and who, I'm fine. Who wants to, how, hey Darren, who wants to re come back from retirement, a Super Bowl champion, and catch punts? Like, that's, are you kidding? That's what I love, though. Like, I love punt return. Loved it. But, right, now, but but you've made peace with it. Like, that would hurt so bad, wouldn't it? Like, wouldn't it, uh-uh. <laughs> Do you miss it? Because I can't imagine there's nothing that replaces that feeling, right? Nah, it's nothing. It's nothing gonna replace that. Uh, I, I just miss Sundays. Like I miss Sundays. Um, I don't miss the meetings and and all that other stuff. You miss catching punts in the NFL. I do. That would be I a do. nightmare. That should be like to me. That's something that should be offered if you commit a crime. And you go 120 and a 90, you should be like, well, this Sunday you'll be catching punts for the L.A. Chargers, and that's your punishment. Like, that sounds awful. No? No. Okay. Uh -uh. Okay, well, uh, Howie Roseman on line one. He'll be calling you, I'm sure, shortly after this and securing <laughs> yeah, securing your trip to the Super Bowl. Up against who? Who do you think it'll be Eagles who before I let you go? Um, Chiefs. I think it's going to be Eagles Mm. Eagles Buffalo.
Eagles, Buffalo. Okay, in the yeah. desert, yeah. all yeah. right. Yeah. Inside, turf, I don't know. We'll have to talk about that for your for your uh, playoff run into the Super Bowl. <laughs> but we appreciate you, Darren Sproles, so much. Go enjoy life. And we just uh, uh, are excited to see you back on the field in a couple of weeks. <laughs> well, thank you for having me on. Uh, uh, you know, I don't normally do uh, I know. interviews and stuff like that. So I'm just, when you asked me, I said, of course, you know what I'm saying? But but normally, I don't do them. Thank you so much, and I appreciate it. And I think you should do more. You're amazing, but not with anybody else, just with me. Uh, yes. you, but you can follow Darren Sproles on Instagram because you do do predictions. You just heard a Super Bowl prediction, uh, but he does that. And then uh, and good luck and, and all the love to your family and, and your post-life career uh, from the NFL. But we are, we, are, we are huge fans of you, of course. Thank you, Darren. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be back right here. Oh, my gosh. I'm up and Adam's show. I need to drink champagne now. That was amazing. He's coming back. He's coming back to the NFL. Sam Monson. Okay, well, now we have this. All right, a little PFF here. Highest scoring drive percentage in the NFC. The Seattle Seahawks, 43. Oh, Darren Sproles number. 43.4% eyeball emojis. All right, I told you all, oh, boy, that Gino isn't someone to mess with. Um, have his Seahawks have the highest scoring drive percentage, as you just saw, so let's not sleep on it, but it is Friday. And Rihanna said it best. Cheers to the freaking weekend. That's something that a producer wrote for me that I didn't come up with myself, but let's do it as we bring in Sam Munson and get P F F up. Woo! Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That was aggressive. <laughs> And it's time, as always, on a Friday. Uh, we had beer. I don't want to get into the beer. The polit There's the politics of beer going on right now, so I am drinking <laughs> some champagne. What do you got, buddy? Look, I don't make the rules, Kate. The Qataris make the rules, and the only thing that's allowed is Bud Zero or Coca-Cola products. So I've got an official Qatari-approved Bud Zero. So that is, an, that is an N.A. beer, an N.A. Uh, and, and yeah, and in any situation, well, cheers to you, my friend. Let's do it here with Sam Munson rocking a kit. Uh, look, I thought you were dressed as a as, as something like dressed in a costume at first when I saw you, but now we are here. Yeah. And, and so let's do it here with some numbers that might make NFL fans say, "Man, that's PFF'd up." And we're going to start with the number 81. Let's do it. I think that's the number of times I'm going to hear my dad screaming at the television when Mexico takes on Poland next Tuesday at 8 a.m. Here local uh, and Mexico probably takes care of business against Lewandowski and company. What is it? Well, really? due to an unfortunate series of circumstances, chief amongst them being we're terrible at football right now, Ireland aren't actually at the World Cup, so I've worn this throwback jersey because of that. Nice. 81 is the number of yards that JC Horn has given up all season long. Whoa. There are six cornerbacks last week that gave up more than 81 <laughs> yards. JC Horn has been locked down this year. And yet the Panthers still somehow, that's insane. I didn't, I really didn't, I don't, I ever look at these before you come. That's insane. Just 81 yards. Six other guys allowed that just last week. The more crazy thing is that the Panthers still somehow have the only the 25th ranked defense. So I love, and I've talked about this for years now, the young talent that they have. I don't understand why it's been such a struggle, Sam, for Carolina defensively otherwise. Yeah, it's, it's been a grind for them, and it doesn't always show up every single week. But J.C. Horn is one of the few guys that does seem to be doing it every single week. Mm. Okay, next up. Oh, man, only the finest for me when it comes to champagne. <laughs> Quality here. <coughs> as, I was, as I was saying, the number, Sam, is 24. That they're telling me in my ear. I'm gonna. I could. I could make a joke about 24 being the cutoff number for Leonardo DiCaprio partners, but I'm guessing that's not what you want to talk about. No, no, it's not. 24 is the number of pass blocking snaps that it took Vikings backup left tackle Blake Brandle to give up for his first sack. Christian Darisaw hasn't given up a sack in almost 400 pass blocking snaps this season. So if Darisaw can't go this week against Dallas Cowboys, Micah Parsons, that pass rush, yeah. that could get pretty ugly. Yeah, the Vikings had to deal with Von Miller last week, and now it's, as you said, I mean, Micah Parsons, he has eight sacks already this year. All right, that's a number I knew off the top of my head. Uh, this number is 555. Uh, 555, 555. I think those are the first three digits of a phone number that girls all over LA give to Conrad as a fake phone number every weekend. That's true, the, the fake area code for the TV. Um, 
It is the number of rushing yards Justin Fields has over the past five weeks, wow. which leads the NFL, most in the NFL at any position. This unlocked Justin Fields, this new rushing threat of Justin Fields has completely transformed him and that Chicago Bears offense. The Bears lead the NFL with over 2,000 rushing yards this season. That's wild. And he's a big part of that, of course. That's over 400 yards, by the way, uh, more than the next closest team, and that would be the Falcons. So they are running the ball a ton in the Windy City. All right, the next number is zero. Uh, I will say this. My parents are in town uh, for the first time visiting me ever in my life. And uh, zero is the number. <laughs> I, I put together like a fake life. I had, you know, flowers, and I had a guest bedroom for them. I was I spent $2,000 at Target yesterday. Like, so stupid. And then we sit down to eat, and I thought I got away with it. Like, I live an adult life. I don't eat takeout every night. And my dad goes, where? Do you have any forks? And I, he goes, where are the forks? And I said, I have zero forks. That is a true story. I did not own forks. And so that's what I'm going to say it is. What do you got? Zero. Well, not just the uh, the amount of alcohol in this beer. Uh, oh man, but man! The number man. of the number of turnover-worthy plays that Colt McCoy had for the Arizona Cardinals. Kyle Whoa. Murray has had 16 this season, the highest turnover-worthy play rate of his entire career by a distance. Like the line moves a lot when Colt McCoy comes in for Kyler Murray, and it should. Kyler Murray's a better player, but. We're not getting kind of vintage Kyler this year. Like the distance between those two guys might not be as big as people think it is. So the 27 points that the Cardinals scored with Colt McCoy, the second most offensive points they've put up put up in a game this season. I made the argument they got to they got to roll them out there again, Sam. Yeah, I mean, I genuinely think that people are overestimating what a drop off that is this season. Uh, and the last one is 90.1. 90.1, I can't even imagine what that could be. What's that 0.1 decimal for? That was the PFF game grade for Chris Jones the last time the Chiefs played the Chargers. He oh. was an absolute wrecking machine in that game. Six total pressures, a couple of sacks, gave Matt Filer in particular all kinds of problems in that game. Chargers haven't figured out how to stop Chris Jones this time around. That's the kind of individual matchup that can completely determine the outcome of a game. And let's talk about what they could do against the run, right? This defensive front, uh, front for the Chiefs is doing so well. They're the fifth best run defense in the league this year. Sam, World Cup, give me, are you, are you watching? Are you in? Are you passionate? Like, who does what? And what are you most looking forward to to kick it off? Yeah, I'd like to see Messi go out with, you know, with the final crowning glory. The guy's arguably the greatest player of all time. He just has never managed to get it done at World Cups, usually not because of his fault. Just Argentina haven't had the teams yep. around him. They might have this year. So let's go Messi. One one final one to, to write off into the sunset. So much pressure from, I mean, his, it's his home crowd. He's never been able to fulfill it. I know it's a smaller scale, but like, and I know that I'm like a Polish homer, obviously, but same sort of situation as Messi. They get it done in these big tournaments and for their clubs and respectively for other people. But when it comes to these big tournaments, it doesn't work out. It's such a weird, interesting World Cup being played at a different time of year, of course. Those advantages, not having, you know, the, the time to prepare prepare for it as they used to or are they as they have in World Cups past being uh, in the winter and then you know you bring up the beer of it all it'll be interesting to see what the crowds are like <laughs> seriously yeah it, be I mean it's it the whole thing is a very very strange World Cup so it'll be a fascinating one to watch just from the outside looking in yeah I don't know Polish sober Polish people <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work out for my, my home team. We appreciate you, Sam Munson. You can check him out, of course, and catch out all of his work over at PFF.com. Those are the, hey, if you're over at FanDuel Sportsbook, PFF, those are the kind of numbers. And on the new PFF app that you got to check out, that will help tilt you in the right direction when you're having a little fun in week 11. All right, next up. Oh, boy. Need a, it's kind of good after you have a couple of sips. It's like drinking, you know. Turpentine. Okay. What, what is turp? I literally don't know what turpentine is. Why do I say that? I got under the radar, radar fantasy pickups uh, for FanDuel Sportsbook up next. If I break a long one, I better see Vanilla Vic down there.
All right, you up. That's the text the Packers sent me, and it's what you are looking for. Sleepers for week 11 need a spark. I got you covered. Here you go, Daniel Jones. Vanilla Vic? I can't. We're not going to get into that. We've seen DJ go off this year in games where he uses his legs. The Lions have allowed the most rushing yards to quarterbacks this season, the most fantasy points to them as well. How about Brian Robinson at Texans? He finished Week 10 against the Eagles as the RB2. Uh, just the second time he's done so all year inside the top 24. Let's do it. How about, uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Who we got? We got Darius Slayton. We know the Giants aren't a volume passing attack. Slayton's emerged as a consistent option. Double digit points in three straight weeks. Clear at number one there. Tyreek Waddle, DK Metcalf, <gasps> Mike Evans. Ton of receivers on buys this week. That's rough. Get him in there. And then you can also, because there's so many buys, Kadarius Tony, Juju Hardman. They're still in the air. MVS sick all week. So we could be getting Kadarius Tony show Sunday night football. Even if these guys play, uh, we can still have a big game for him. He's really worked himself into that offense. And then you got Juwan Johnson here. Favorite targeted Andy Dalton, especially in the red zone. We want Andy Dalton in chains. And the way we get it is by putting Juwan Johnson in your daily lineups over at FanDuel Sportsbook. I'm not kidding. Great streaming option, Juwan, up against the Rams this week. And there you have it. We will be back because we've got some K-makers. Pow, pow, pow after this right here on Up and Adams. Happy Friday. Cheers. All right, time for some K-Makers. He's like a really punnable name. It's true. All right, let's do this thing. Uh, let me just close in my ear. Yes, it is. I don't know who that was. I got you covered here. Fun show, great week. Man, we are 50-some episodes in, so cheers to that. But let's get to some K-Makers here. These are guys I think might, maybe, will, probably will. Tip the scales in your favor over to FanDuel Sportsbook for touchdowns. Dalvin Cook. Let me tell you why. Uh, I'm very confident in him. Why? Because he scores touchdowns in like every game. He has scored in five straight, and you saw what the Packers just did to the Cowboys run defense last week. The other guy, all right, give me, give me some good love here. Give, come on, Marissa, give me, give me some clapping, give me some juju, give me some. Blah, blah. Antonio Gibson! I think he does it. If you want to take a little, you want to have a little fun, you want a little, you guys are always saying, oh, that's obvious. Okay, all right, put him in there because I think he's got an abysmal. Texans are on defense to take care of. He's been vultured by Brian Robinson. Sure, yeah, fine. But he has scored in three of his last four. Okay, my last one. We ready? I don't know if I have it in me. I don't know. Isaiah Pacheco! Let's do it. This is a big swing. We, like to, we don't like real obvious ones because you guys yell at me on Twitter. He hasn't scored since week one. How about that? How about they're there for some stones for you for a week 11? Uh, but his snaps are all-time high. 16 of 17 carries for the Chiefs. And he's clearly the guy. He punches one in for you this week. Uh, have a good weekend, everybody. Be safe. Don't drink and drive. I could say something here, but I won't.